I hope you guys are excited as I am about this. Today's the day that we're gonna finish the crank curing station. And now that we got the parts all cleaned up outside, we're gonna take them inside and have a little quick look at them. Everything's looking pretty darn good. And I've dusted off the one, two, three block. Now, I don't really use the one, two, three blocks very often because of their sheer bulk. They, they really find a lot of the inconsistencies of things in the middle. And the only really reason why I use them today was because it raised it up above the jaws of the vise so I don't machine end to it. Now, there's lots of different ways that I could have done this and it just so happened that I had a 5 8 end mill. A face cutter probably would have been the best choice to go through all this, but then sometimes the face cutters don't give you a good 90 degree, but we'll get into that here in a second. Our first step is, is we're gonna actually rough this bottom surface off. There's quite a bit of raised casting there that we're actually gonna have to heavy mill off. Okay, well, not really heavy mill, <laughs> but I'm gonna go down about an eighth of an inch and just skim all that stuff off. And then we're gonna come up to the back surface and we're just gonna bring that up to 90 degrees. Now, originally when I casted this, I wanted to leave a round in there because of shrinkage. I didn't wanna create any cracks, but as this project kinda of <laughs> wore on a little bit, it became really obvious that I couldn't have that round in that bottom corner and that I actually needed a 90 degree surface because we're gonna use this a little bit later on when we throw it in with the parallels. And now that we have all that rough cut, we're gonna come back, throw some cutting fluid on it, and we're actually gonna come back and make a nice surface on this. Now, these are gonna be the surfaces that people are gonna look at later. So we're gonna really take our time to get our feeds and speeds right. I mean, I know we're doing this by hand. And to get it vertically up and down. That vertically up and down that you see there, that's gonna be important a little bit later. And we'll kind of explain that as we go. So before we use the edge finder, we're going to have to clean those edges up because there's a bit of a burr on either side that's going to be a little bit inconsistent. And when we find this, the edge, essentially, it could throw us off, you know, 20, 30 thou in either direction. So the reason why we're finding the edge here is because we have to drill some holes in here for the actual slider of the bearing thing to go up and down. Remember the last video we made that bearing roller thing? Well, that's what's going to go on here. So now that we found our edge, we're going to zero it. We're going to pop over to the other side, bring it down, and then we're going to find the edge on the other side. Really simple. I mean, it's so simple with digital readout. We take the 1.6 and change, and we divide it by 2, and then we just roll it over to 0.81, and we've got our center. Usually I'll hit, you know, the zero on that, of course, and then we know for sure later what we have. Now, really important part now that we found center I need to cut two reference points that later when we flip this 90 degrees, we can come back to and find center again. Mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> full disclaimer, I actually machined one of the parts and like, I'm almost embarrassed to admit it. I actually machined one of the parts and forgot to do the step and I didn't have center and wound up, we're gonna have to melt that part down <laughs> because it totally slipped my mind finding center. And once I took it out, it was too late and it was just easier to machine the other four because I have a bunch of extra. Let's grab that roller plate and mark out roughly where we're gonna have the holes. Now keep in mind this is gonna slide up and down, so we have to give it about a, you know, three quarters of an inch or an inch of travel so that if a shaft's bigger on one side or smaller on the other side, this will allow us to move one side up or the other side down and then we can have it kinda perfectly horizontal. Now what I'm gonna do here is once again I'm gonna find the edge and essentially, I'm just gonna throw an arbitrary number once I've zeroed it on that edge, and I'm gonna bring it up, I think it was 950 thou, and we're gonna stop it there, zero it, and this is where we're gonna drill our hole. And guess what size hole that we're gonna drill? That's right, the same one that we've been drilling all along, and I like to maintain consistency because <laughs> you, you always can over engineer things and it's just nice when everything is the same size thread, the same size bolt, or you know, at least try to keep it within one or two sizes. I've been on some really major projects like 
50 ton multi-million dollar screen decks and an engineer actually grossly over engineered it and the sizes of wrenches once you crawled into the space that you had to work i think there's like four or five different wrenches that were marginally different sizes but completely over engineered and totally not necessary and remember when you're designing stuff simplicity is key right we tend to way overthink things but i'm totally getting way off track and let's get back on track here and grab our f drill bit and drill the holes but today we're going to do something a little different here we're going to take advantage of our dro that we installed about a year ago and we're going to drill to an exact depth of 550 thou and it doesn't have to be 550 thou but i wanted to go a half inch deep and kind of the chisel point of everything was 50 thou roughly and if we drill through to the other side it's going to leave a really ugly cosmetic look and plus we got to give an example to use a bottoming tap and what better example to use than on this project here the distance between these two bolts here i decided arbitrarily to be 850 thou and realistically it didn't really matter too much but we needed to leave a little bit of separation between those two bolts to keep everything kind of vertical going up and down and remember in the last video we talked about the bottoming tap the difference between the two taps remember is is there's only one or two threads that are starting and there isn't like five to six threads and that's going to give you a taper at the bottom and we're looking for the bolt to go all the way to the bottom and not to kind of bind up as it goes into the threads So one of the real rookie mistakes that people make out there is not cleaning off the tap properly. Now, I know I'm just wiping it off here, but I'm actually gonna give it a brush with a brush later to make sure I got off all of the chips. Because I mean, in the end, you don't wanna introduce more problems to the hole. You're already creating chips that are going in the hole and it could cause some binding up issues later on. Now, let's fit everything up and have a quick look at it before we move on to the next stage. That's looking pretty darn good. Now, you're probably wondering, how are we gonna move on to the next stage? And that's gonna be using the reference sides that we used before. Remember we created the four reference sides, the back, the top, and the two sides that we're gonna true in here. And we're gonna use our trusty parallel, and we're gonna take advantage of the 90 degree surface that we created on the first machining, and then we're gonna give it a quick tap down. Now, keep in mind, there's not gonna be any bounce back on that because that's an aluminum and it's actually deforming as I hammer on it. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just ask me in the notes and I'll explain more what I'm talking about. But we're gonna take advantage of those two reference sides and we're gonna do the same thing we did before. We're gonna zero it on one side, we're gonna come over to the other side, and just like we did before, we're gonna divide it by two and that will give us our center. So the next stage in the game here is I'm just going to machine off this top surface more for cosmetic reasons than anything. I mean, realistically, nobody's ever going to see it, but if I don't do this, I'm going to know it's going to look like crap and I'm not going to be happy with the end result. And from here, we're going to come over to the other side and we're going to machine the beginnings of the T-slot. Now I'm just going to zero my knee at zero. And then I'm going to come up the 100 thou, and that's going to give us the step that we want in the end. So essentially what we're going to do here is, I mean, lots of people way overthink this, but it's pretty darn simple. I mean, this is the groove that's going to fit in the T-slot to locate it. And we're just going to take a test cut a little bit bigger, quite a bit bigger than what we really need. And we're going to do it evenly on both sides. This will allow us to come back in a couple minutes and actually measure and then essentially, whatever we're over, we divide it by two. <laughs> and it's pretty darn simple from there. We just take that fraction off and then we technically should be on size if everything goes good.
And now essentially for the moment of truth, let's take a quick measurement, zero our calipers, and then stick it in there and see how much clearance that we're actually gonna have. And six out clearance is probably a really good clearance. I mean, it's gonna be tight enough that it's not gonna flop around and it's gonna be loose enough that it's not gonna get stuck in there. Now, it's just a matter of taking advantage of that parallel that we got in there and we gotta drill that hole for where that bolt's actually gonna go down. So like you saw there, I found the edge on the parallel. I come over the 100 thou, go back to the center that I had, and then we're just gonna center drill and make sure we don't make any stupid mistakes like drilling into a parallel. And then we're gonna grab the drill that's gonna allow for the threads so that we can actually stick a bolt in through there. It's pretty much as simple as measuring the outside of the bolt threads and then adding maybe five thou, and that'll give you clearance for what you're looking for. Keep in mind, if you have a shoulder on the bolt, obviously you're gonna to wanna to measure the shoulder and then add five or 10 thou for your clearance as well. Let's take this bad boy out of here, dust it off a little bit, have a quick look at it. This turned out pretty darn good and I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. Now, one little thing that I will say that we could have done better in this project is the T-slots weren't cut quite deep enough so we had to make ourselves a custom T-slot. But in the end, everything's going together really, really good. And I'm pretty happy with how this has come together as well. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. What do you think I could have done better? Or what do you think would make this project better for the next one that we cast so that we get a better product in the end? And speaking of the next projects, uh, the next project we're actually gonna be building something for the closing lathe that's gonna involve casting and cutting gears. It's gonna be pretty interesting. Check that one out. I'm gonna put that in the links up above here. And I know you're gonna love that one because it's gonna be even better than this one here. Now let's throw this small crank in here and talk about why we're running it on the bearing surface. You see the center there? On this crank, it's actually a little bit bent. So if we stuck this in the lathe and ran it between centers, essentially that center would throw everything off. But we're actually running this on the bearing surface and it's a better way of actually checking to see if your crank's within its tolerances that you actually need. Now, keep in mind, pressing cranks apart and putting them back together and getting them true is an art all onto itself. I'm fully capable of doing it. However, there's better guys out there that are really good at doing this. And I'll throw a couple links in the links down below and probably up on the screen here. You should check them out. 